uh, so a wormhole, just so people can understand it. If you look at space and time, we've learned ever since Einstein in 1916, when he advanced the general theory of relativity, which is the modern understanding of gravity. We learned that gravity is the curvature of space-time. Space-time, yeah. And what you do is when you are falling towards something, you are simply sliding along the fabric of your space-time towards whatever it was that you were saying is attracting you. And so it's an interesting, it's, it's a different construct from just action at a distance. You're there, I'm here, we have gravity, we pull each other and that's it. It's a whole other thing going on. And if you think of space and time as fabric, right. then you can distort the fabric with the force of gravity. Captain, so I believe there's been a distortion in the space-time continuum. Exactly. Okay. So if you, if you ask yourself, can I distort it in interesting ways that might benefit what I want to do in the universe? So mm. for example, I can get you around among the planets using the rockets that we've got, and I can get you there before you die. All right, uh, so <laughs> moving around the solar system takes days to the moon, months to Mars, years to the to the outer planets, and decade, you know, maybe one or two decades to Pluto. If you okay. want to put that, keep that on your list. If you want to visit other stars, then every way we know to get there exceeds the human life expectancy. So you have to find a way to shorten that journey knowing that the speed of light is not just a good idea, it's the law, right? All right. There's a speed limit to how fast you can move in that fabric of space and time. The nearest star is four light years away. At the speed of light, you watch someone go at the speed of light, it'll take them four years. To do that, you say, okay, well, let's just do that then. But right. we're nowhere near the speed of light, all right? This is, you know, so so it's hopeless. And that's the nearest star. Nearest. So you imagine, let's, is there a way maybe you can poke a hole through, or open up a hole in the fabric of space and time in a way that it's curved such that you can take a shortcut from one location to another. Nice. So imagine if you had a sheet that, and so compress everything to a sheet because otherwise it's hard to think of right. bending four dimensions. So, I could, so our universe is now a sheet. So if I take that sheet, normally I'd have to travel the full length of the sheet to get from A to B. And I want to do that before the TV commercial, okay? And so what do you do? You warp the space and then open up a hole from one side to the other where the two places are close in this higher dimension. Right. And by doing so, you basically take this portal through, come out the other side, unfold the, the, paper, the page. And you've traveled all that distance in no time at all. It, it basically, and the no time part is, well, how, how much did you warp the space in order right. to do that? How, and if it, you warp it a lot, it can happen basically instantly, like walking through a doorway. Or if it's warped a little less, then it'll take you a little longer. But in all cases, your effective speed is way greater than the speed of light because you basically cheated <laughs> and went, right. went across the other side. He says, I'm asking myself after I watched the movie, The Atom Project, if you really can time travel with wormholes. So Brian, we're talking about time travel and wormholes. Uh, I presume, we, I think everyone knows with Einstein relativity, you can travel into a future, all right? Or at least into the future of where you once were. So let's confine this to, can you go backwards in time? Do wormholes enable this at all? Wormholes are getting increasingly interesting, actually, um, particularly in the study of black holes. We can, we can get onto that. But um, so, yes, uh, wormholes are allowed geometries in Einstein's theory of general relativity. If you just take that theory alone, what do I mean by that? So it, they really are shortcuts through space and time. So you can imagine, you know, traveling from New York to Sydney, it takes a long time. You go around the surface of the Earth or you could tunnel through and you could get there quicker. So, so yes, if wormholes exist, and you could travel through them, and they were big enough and stable enough, then you can build a time machine. Um, now, 
virtually every physicist who works on this, and Kip Thorne actually, who got the Nobel Prize for gravitational waves, did quite a lot of interesting work on this. When you add quantum mechanics into the mix, which is the theory of everything else, because our universe hasn't just got gravity in it, it's got all sorts of other things in it as well, obviously atoms and electromagnetic radiation and so on, then it seems like the wormholes are inherently unstable, the big ones. And if you try to travel through one, it collapses. So that's basic. I should say, by the way, that they're part of, they're, they're such an integral part of Einstein's theory. It's a very famous paper in the 1930s by Einstein and Rosen. And they, they were called Einstein Rosen bridges before they were wormholes. And they're, they're built in to the basic description of a, of a black hole. If the black hole had, listed, uh, had lived forever, it's called the eternal, the maximally extended Schwarzschild metric, right? Whatever it's called. But it was, that which was discovered by Schwarzschild in 1916, just after the theory was published, then there's a wormhole in there, right? So they're just fundamental to the theory. But most physicists believe, and Stephen Hawking wrote a paper actually called The Chronology Protection Conjecture, Conjecture, oh. where he thought about this. Who knew he that, was that, a rapper? They will be unstable. <laughs> yeah, chronolo chronolo I, mean, I can even say it, you can say it. I can't say it. Chronology Protection Conjecture. Um, but uh, the, the, these things would not be stable and you can't travel through them so you can't build time machines. However, it's worth saying that wormholes are becoming very, very fashionable now in what's called the ER equals EPR paradigm. So Einstein Rosen, ER is Einstein Rosen, this thing from the 1930s where Einstein and Rosen noticed that they these geometries exist in space-time or can exist. EPR is Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, spooky action at a distance. It's quantum entanglement. And so what now is very fashionable and looks it's one of the best explanations of how information gets out of a black hole is that this plays a role so you can there's a kind of a dual description so we've got quantum entanglement which is this spooky action at a distance thing where you separate things to large distances and they're still um, linked in some way um, the linked in some way is starting to look possibly like you can describe that in terms of wormholes microscopic wormholes mm. linking them together mm -hmm. but this is really this is stuff that's been done now 2020 2022 so it's um it's on the edge but people are taking it very okay seriously. so wait we, let's let's pause there and come back but all right now you've established that we agree we can think about wormholes but you haven't told us how to go backwards in time so brian <laughs> how do you use wormholes to actually travel backwards in time is that possible well so yeah if 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 they were stable or you could stabilize them in some way then you could use them as time machines. Um, and uh, that's considered to be unlikely. Mm. Um, but it, it really is true to say that we, do, well, it's very true to say we don't have what's called a quantum theory of gravity. So we don't really, in any sense, understand the, the deep merger between relativity and quantum mechanics, which you need to understand to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, and many physicists point out that we don't, it feels like it's no way to build a universe. We've all seen Back to the Future. We all know the paradoxes that happen if, you, if time travel is a reality. So, so I think if you pushed most physicists and said, don't be formal about it and don't say what I just said, which is we don't understand quantum gravity yet, um, it, then most physicists would say, okay, we think the laws of nature will be such that there aren't stable, macroscopic, big wormholes. Um, that's what I think most physicists would say. Um, but Kip, actually, you mentioned interstellar, um, and Kip Thorne is one of the world experts on this, does point out that you can get around this. So you could have a universe uh, which permitted time travel and was not full of contradictions if there were no free will at all. So the whole universe itself is completely consistent and the time travel is built into the consistencies. I think Kurt Vonnegut got it right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. He just described your life is always there. You're always being born. You're always dying. You're always in school. You're always in love. And you just rejoin where you were on that timeline and relive that. There's a Stephen Hawking's birthday party. No, it's Kip Thorne's birthday party. There's a proceedings. So, so Neil, on a, when we go to scientific conferences, you have a proceedings. It's a big thing. And there's a proceedings. for. One, I think it's Kip. I think it's his 60th birthday party. And S Stephen Hawking gave a, a talk and it's written up in the proceedings of his birthday party because he's so eminent. And, it, and Stephen said, um, said that Kip has become increasingly interested in time travel through wormholes as he's got older. 
<laughs> That's how he started. <laughs> so oh, he started oh, the oh, it's a, <laughs> Wish I loved it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the movie Monsters Inc. was all about wormholes. Did you see Monsters Inc.? You have kids. You saw Monsters Inc. I did several times. I've seen that. Okay, the doors. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. They're manufacturing doors That's that the funny. monsters take home, and then they open the door. That is the door of the closet of the kid that you have to scare that night. That's right. Okay, and there's a big chase scene where they're going in and out of doors in the factory, and they show up in Paris, and they show up in in you know, in 20 different places with every door they pass through. Those are wormholes. So instead of a transporter, which molecularly de- I'm getting there, you were exactly oh. right. You yeah. Chuck, that's my next thing. So my point is, if you just walk through a door, you walk through a door, right. okay? That's the wormhole. Then the transporter in Star Trek, which dematerializes you, beams your energy at the speed of light to a location, and then you get rematerialized, Right. Would be completely unnecessary. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. just pop the hatch, walk through, and now you're in the other spaceship. Now Why you're on the you, planetary surface. Why'd you have to take me apart? <laughs> exactly. You completely <laughs> took me apart, bro. Completely. Yeah. Okay. Plus, uh, there was some episode I was told, maybe in the later series, because I'm less complete in the later series, that there's some fraction of your molecules that are not transported Reconstituted, accurately. yes. Yeah, there's well, like an well, er that's, copying errors. Yeah, that's well, that's why they have the uh, buffer. It's called the transporter buffer system because of that. It compensates for that, which is why sometimes, which is so lazy, but it, I love it. it, it works. It's like somebody gets lost and they're just like, well, what we'll do is we'll use the transporter buffer to take all of their molecular imprint and then we'll just make them the, make bring the person back. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So they don't they don't really die in a pile of goo, right? For, right? Okay, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's interesting there is we're in the age of information, which was not so in the 1960s, right. and so they weren't thinking about information in the same way or at all. And so all you really need to do is make an exact copy of all the information that is contained within you, all the neurosynaptic configurations and everything, and then beam the information to another ship and then recreate you there. And then what that means is I can create you in any location and I can create multiple use. That's right. right. And I mean, why not? They do that with the with the replicator. All right. That's right. That's uh, all the replicator does. That's it, all it does. It, yeah. So in principle, if you have a replicator, you don't need a transporter system. Okay. We just have the information of who you are and transport that. But so that's one thing you would do with a wormhole. Okay, so we have monster scaring children. That's first application. That's <laughs> Second, I love it. Because <laughs> otherwise, how they, otherwise how are they going to get in your in, in the kids' room? There's no way they can get in. Exactly. Another thing is, imagine if the back of your refrigerator were connected to your grocer. Oh wow! He'd stock it the same way he stocks the shelves at the grocery at, store. At the, at the grocery store. They take a peek, oh, you'd be low on lettuce. And if the lettuce is turning bad, they'll take out the lettuce, put in a fresh one, and there is no transportation network involved. Mm, say goodbye, Grubhub. The, 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 in, yeah, so Grubhub is, is, a, is a practical wormhole, right? By the way, you know what else a wormhole is? Another, is an elevator. Ooh, Think yes. about it. You walk into a room, the door closes, and then when the door reopens, you're in a completely yeah. different time and place. That's actually kind of, you know, you know, yes, that. Think about that. Yeah. Just, if, if you, if before electricity and before elevators and before tall buildings, just grab someone off the street and take them into a modern elevator. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Yeah, and then the would... doors, you know, they, they're on street level or something. And then they push a button and then they open it up and then they're a hundred stories up and they'll freak out. How did that happen? The room didn't change. I didn't see anything. There were no windows. What happened? So uh, for me, an elevator is a modern sort of next best thing to a wormhole that you can come up with. Yeah. As, right? As, you could be in one room and then take an elevator and then it's a kitchen and another room and, and then it's a, like a living room or whatever, yeah. you know? And, and so just the world changes just in a matter of seconds. So. Uh, so what do we have? So we have the elevator is a poor man's <laughs> wormhole. Yeah. We got 
scaring children in their closet. We've got the transporter in Star Trek. We've got the back of your refrigerator. And what that ends up doing is completely removing the transportation sector from the world. I was going to say, what you really do, I'm home for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Since every galaxy we observe so far has had a supermassive black hole at the center of it, and theoretically a black hole could be turned into a worm hole, what if they were used as save points, like in a video game across space and time for a creator of sorts to get across galaxies more quickly to create what we know as space? I think what he wants is, because black holes and wormholes are related, and may be related, Okay, and he wants to know whether there's some, I'm, I'm, I might be exaggerating his question, okay. whether there's some intergalactic highway system. Yes. That connects one galaxy to another. Yeah. Across that, the universe. Right. Through these black holes. Through these black holes. In other words, like it's, you know, kind of like, uh, what's that What's that city? Minneapolis. Minneapolis, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah, so Minneapolis. Well, they have the, they have, you walk, you walk, you never have to go outside. I mean, when it's 40 it's below. It's really cold when, and you, when it's and 40 you just below. walk between buildings. Right. So each just, buildings are connected so you never have to go outside. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing. Nobody would live the idea more than I would. If a black hole, which only eats things, is a portal to a wormhole, the other side of that wormhole can't also be a black hole. Right. It has because to then be, you wouldn't be shoving it, things out. That would, that's called a white hole. Oh, really? Yes. Now, see, what well, white hole got to be given and a black <laughs> hole got to be taken. <laughs> so is there really a white hole? That's a white black hole. Black Panther, that's a double reference back. The yes, Black Panther is the, the group from the Civil from Rights the Civil Movement. Rights. And not the movie. That's right. Right, right. I'm and the guy that uses vibranium. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So where were we? We were talking about yeah. the fact that there is something called a white hole. There. Yes, so something called a white hole. And that you didn't just totally which would make be that the, up. I did not totally make it up. And this was explored in the 1970s. Okay. When the mathematics of black holes were coming to maturity. And someone pos posited, well, if you have a black hole, it what's on the other side? It would be like a white hole. I mean, I mean, why not? Right. Where everything only comes out. Right. Then how would you connect them? With a wormhole. Nice. So this, you got this, you get three for one right. deal on that. And then you can ask yourself what a white hole would look like in the universe. Mm -hmm. So in, in 1970s, we said, if this is what a white hole would look like, let's check the data. Let's, let's go to the universe. Right. Nothing in the universe resembled it. Gotcha. Not even quasars, which are intense e emanations of light from the distant universe <sighs> in a very small volume. So we, uh, so we abandoned that. Okay. So if you could, I don't mind wormholes connecting the galaxies. I just don't see how you would invoke the black hole to do that. To do it. That's gotcha. All, all right. But Excellent. Great, great question. We're going to take a break. Yep. Before we get lost in the black hole bag. <laughs> exactly.